Hey guys, just want to take a look at a different type of two-step equation today. The ones that we looked at in our previous lesson, our variable was being multiplied by some number. In this case, it's going to be divided by some number, but we're still going to use some of the same ideas, get rid of, getting rid of the constant first, and then isolating our variable. Uh, just as a quick intro problem, if the elevation of Quimanitak is one meter less than half the elevation of Prince Rupert, British Columbia, well, is ha less than half. Uh, if the elevation of Quimanitak is 18, what's the elevation of Prince Rupert? So uh, the elevation of Quimanitak is the same as, it tells us, one meter less. So take away one and half the elevation of Prince Rupert. So if I took the elevation of Prince Rupert, divided in half or divided in two, and went one less than that, I'd get the same number as 18. These should be the same as each other. And so uh, we want to yeah, come up with a way to solve this. So um, in the same way as we looked at in our last topic, what we want to do is we want to get rid of our constant term first. I would do that by adding one to both sides. And then I'm just down to P over two equals 18. And then this is just a one step equation. I have P being divided by two. I want to choose the opposite operation to that. The opposite operation to division is multiplication. So in this case, I want to multiply both sides by two. And then up here, we're going to find out that P is equal to 36 meters. Uh, if you get into a situation where you're asked to solve by modeling, so in this case we have x over 4 equals, or take away 5 equals negative 7. There's a couple ways to do this. We could, we could use our fraction tiles. And so uh, in this case what we have is This whole thing would represent 1x. If I shaded it all in green, it would represent 1x, but I don't have uh, I don't have a full x. I only have a quarter of it. If it was a chocolate bar, I only have one piece left out of four. Then I have take away five on this side. One, two, three, four, five. And this equals seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so what a, to figure out if what this whole X is worth, my first step is I want to take away these five and take away, take away a negative five off this side and take away a negative five on this side. Or in other words, I kind of want to just take an eraser and erase five here and erase five there. Another way of showing this is I might just draw a circle around them and show that I'm removing them like this. So at this point here, once I, in a way, get rid of those, uh, I'm, I have x over four is equal to negative two. And so that's saying this little chunk here is worth or is the same as negative two. So if I was to fill in another little piece here, well, that would give me another negative two. And for every little chunk I fill in here, that's gonna give me another set of negative two. And then did a fourth one. And then what I see in the end is an x is worth negative 8. Maybe I'll, it doesn't tell me to, I'll just do a quick verification. 
negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 take away 5 is negative 7. The left-hand side would equal the right-hand side. We're in great shape. This one's a little bit trickier because we have, uh, and I'll do it in a different way. This, we're, we have a negative variable here. So what I would do, or what, another method of doing this is, I'm going to use a, a circle, and I'm gonna say that this chunk here, this third, this circle is being divided into three equal pieces. I have one of them. And I'm just going to make a quick note that this section here equals negative p over 3. I just want to indicate that that is a negative. I still have a plus 1 on this side. And this equals negative 4. Okay, uh, the first thing I want to do is get rid of that. And since I can't just, I don't have the same shape on both sides, I can't just erase them. I'm going to get rid of this by making a zero pair. So I'm going to add a negative one here, add a negative one there, and then this just becomes a zero pair. I don't have to think about it anymore. And so what we know now is that a negative third is equal to negative five. So if I add another negative third, I have to add another negative five. And if I add another negative third, I have to add another negative five over here. And so now what I know is that if I have a negative third and a negative third and a negative third, I have a negative variable here. I can say that negative P equals negative 15, because I got negative 15 over here. And so, am I done yet? No, because in the end, I always want my variable to be positive. So I can do that by multiplying by negative one on both sides. And by doing that, all I gotta do is change the signs on both sides of the equation. So I'm gonna change that sign and this sign to its opposite sign. So P just equals 15. Okay, solve using opposite operations is also something we want to do. And so in this case here, I have negative x over 2, take away 6 is equal to 4. I want to get rid of the constant term on the same side of the variable first. So that's this thing. I want to get rid of this first. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides. The point is, is that if I have a negative 6 and a plus 6, it becomes 0. It cancels out. I don't have to think about it anymore once it becomes a 0. And I have ne negative x over 2 equals 10. In this case, uh, I would, x is being divided by 2. So I would multiply by 2 on both sides. And actually, since I know that I want a positive, variable in the end, I'm actually going to multiply by negative 2 so that when I go a negative times a negative, I end up with a positive x. 2's cancel. And 10 times negative 2 is negative 20. Just do a quick check. Negative 20 divided by... T or I guess if I replaced x with just a negative 20, I'd have, that, I'd have two negative signs in a row. Or in other words, a negative 1 times negative 20, so this is going to be, that eventually will become a 20 over 2, which is 10, minus 6 is 4, so I'm in great shape. Okay, and this one is a little bit tricky because our variable's on the other side, but we're still going to use the same ideas. What I want to do is I want to get rid of this first, this plus 3. I want to get rid of the constant term, the number by itself on the same side as my variable. That's what I want to do first. So I'm going to take away 3 on both sides. After doing that, this becomes, get rid of that, and then I have k over 3 equals negative 4, take away 3 is negative 7, and at this point I'm just going to multiply by 3 on both sides. k is being divided by 3, I want to choose the opposite to that, which is multiplication. I want to multiply both sides by 3, and I get negative 21 
equals k. Negative 21 divided by 3 is negative 7. 3 plus negative 7 is negative 4. The left-hand side equals the right-hand side. It looks like I did it right, which is great. And that's it. So take care, everybody.